Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of ABUSD Storytime Science. I'm Mrs. Gillette. Today's story is Who Sank the Boat by Pamela Allen. It's read by Corey Lynn Hall, ABCI Explainer, Class of 2020. Do you remember the last time you played in the bathtub with your toys? What happened when you put them on the surface of the water? Did they stay on top or did they sink to the bottom? Did you ever wonder why? In this story, you will hear about a cow, a donkey, a sheep, a pig, and a mouse. And what happens when they all get in a boat together? Which animal do you think sinks the boat? Why did you choose that animal? Let's listen to the story to see if your prediction was correct. Be sure to stay tuned after the story for a fun activity you can do to test which objects float and which sink. You'll also learn why boats of all sizes can float. See you soon. Who Sank the Boat by Pamela Allen, narrated by Corylin Hall. Beside the sea, on Miss Peffer's place, there lived a cow, a donkey, a sheep, a pig, and a tiny little mouse. They were good friends, and one warm sunny morning, for no particular reason, they decided to go for a row in the bay. Do you know who sank the boat? Was it the cow who almost fell in when she tilted the boat and made such a din? No, it wasn't the cow who almost fell in. Do you know who sank the boat? Was it the donkey who balanced her weight, who yelled, I'll get in at the bow before it's too late? No, it wasn't the donkey who balanced her weight. Do you know who sank the boat? Was it the pig, as fat as butter, who stepped in at the side and caused a great flutter? No, it wasn't the pig, as fat as butter. Do you know who sank the boat? Was it the sheep, who knew where to sit, to level the boat, so that she could knit? No, it wasn't the sheep, who knew where to sit. Do you know who sank the boat? Was it the little mouse, the last to get in, who was the lightest of all? Could it be him? Do you know who sank the boat? Was your prediction correct? Don't be discouraged if it wasn't. Making mistakes is how we learn. We found out in the story that it was the smallest animal that sank the boat. Do you know why? Let's learn the science behind the reason. First, we're going to explore sinking and floating. The question I want to answer is what will sink and what will float? Here's what you'll need. You need a tub of water. You can use a plastic tub like this, a bowl, or if you want to use your bathtub, a swimming pool, anything like that will work. And then you need objects to test. Here's what I collected. I collected a plastic and a metal spoon, a screw, a ruler, a piece of foam, a little glass bowl, a couple different plastic things, a glue stick, cork, craft stick, clothespin, I also have a marker. Now be sure when you are collecting your items, you collect a variety of materials. So plastic, wood, I have metal, I have cork, I see I have a glue stick, so I have a lot of different materials. Now you need to design a data sheet where you can write down your results. Here's my example. So I made an, a place for my object, what the material was, whether it sink or did it float. So I have my two spoons. I'm going to test only four of these for time. So I have my two spoons, one plastic, one metal, a metal screw, and a wooden ruler. So these are the four things I'm going to test. But before I test them, I need to make a prediction. So I'm going to start with the plastic spoon. Let me move my tub over so you can see it. So here's my plastic spoon. I need to make a prediction. Is it going to sink or is it going to float? What do you think? I'm going to put it right on top. Okay, so it is floating on the water. Now I didn't make a prediction, but you're going to. But I am going to write here check mark that it floated when I put it on the water. Now, knowing what I know about the plastic spoon, do I think this is going to sink or is it going to float? You make a prediction. 
Then you place it on the surface of the water, and that one sunk to the bottom. So I'm going to put in check mark next to sink or under sink. Okay, then here's my ruler. I put it on, and that floats. And my last object is the metal screw. Now make your prediction. The metal spoon sank to the bottom, but this is small. So do you think it's going to sink or float? Let's try it. Sink all the way to the bottom. Okay, so now that we have our test done, we're going to move this out of the way, and we are going to look at our data. Do you notice any patterns? I noticed that both metal objects, the spoon and the screw, they both sank. But the plastic spoon and the wooden ruler stayed at the top of the water. I also noticed that we had two objects that are the same shape, but one floated at the top and one sank to the bottom. So they didn't act the same. And then the heaviest item, the ruler, it floated at the top. So that makes that really makes me wonder why. I also noticed that even though the spoons are the same shape, they didn't act the same. And the heaviest object, the ruler, it floated on the top. That's because it's not only about the size and shape, it's about the density of the object. The metal spoon is more dense than the plastic spoon. Let me explain. So, all objects are made of matter. And all matter is made of tiny particles we can't see. In between these particles, there's space. So the density of the object depends on how much space there is between the particles. So here's an example. I have two plates with goldfish on them. One has space between the goldfish. The other doesn't have as much space. So if we look at these, if there's more space between the particles, the object is less dense. Where if there's less space between the particles, the object is more dense. So let's think about the two spoons. Now remember, all matter has density. Even this water has a density. So if the density of the object is less than the density of the water, it floats like this plastic spoon. But if the density of the object is more than the water, like this metal spoon, it sinks. So if you remember in the story, at the beginning, the boat was floating on the surface of the water. Think about it. Does that mean the density of the boat is less dense or more dense than the water it was sitting on? That's right, it was less dense because it was floating on the surface of the water. The second part of our exploration involves displacement. Do you know what that means? It's when an object displaces or pushes aside the water. Think back to the story and the animals in the boat. As the animals got in the boat, so here it is at the beginning floating on the surface, but as they got in, the boat is a little bit lower. That's because the boat displaces or pushes that water aside. As the animals got in and were balanced, it pushes more water aside and the boat sinks lower in the water. Until at the end, the mouse gets in. See how close it is? The mouse's weight wind up pushing the boat lower below the surface of the water and that's when it sank. So what we're going to do is we are going to explore displacement with an engineering activity. Now some of you may have done this with one of our STEM nights, but we are going to design and build a boat. Now we can use aluminum foil, but you can also use Play-Doh or modeling clay. I'm going to use the foil today. So what I want you to do is design and build a boat that floats on the surface of the water. And we're going to use pennies today to test it. Don't worry if you don't have enough pennies at home. You could use marbles or paper clips, anything that will stay in the center. So 
here we go. I am going to place my boat on the surface of the water and you want the surface as still as possible. Mine's moving a little bit since I moved the tub. Then I'm going to place my pennies on the boat. Now, as I'm placing them, I want to balance it. I don't want to put everything on one side of the boat. So I want to watch, is it floating or is it sinking? And I'm going to put them in a little bit faster, but I'm still going to be really careful to keep everything balanced. I don't want all of the pennies on one side or the other. And I don't want to put them in the corners. Now, if you want to know why, test that. But still putting in, it's taking quite a few. bit slower now. And I'm watching all four sides, just making sure that it's not, oh, and there it goes. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out my boat. water out of it and I'm going to need to count my pennies okay so I need to find out how many pennies it took to sink the boat but then I also want to measure my boat because I'm going to be keeping this data to compare the different designs I make so here is just an easy data sheet and I titled it, What Sank the Boat? So I have boat number one, this is my first prototype, and I have the size, the length of the side, the width of the boat, the depth of the boat, and if you have a scale, you can also measure the weight, and then the number of pennies. So when I measured my boat, it was four and a half inches long, four inches wide, and about a half an inch deep. So I wrote all those down and then I would count my pennies and put them right here. Now I want you to design another boat. I want that boat to be able to hold more pennies than the first one. Does that mean it needs to be a larger or smaller boat? What would you need to modify or change on this boat to be able to hold more pennies? If you wanted to keep the bottom of the boat the same size, what would you need to do to the sides of the boat? Be sure to record all of your data for all of your prototypes on a sheet of paper. Do this as many times as you need to, as many times as you want, but for each boat, you are going to measure and count the pennies, okay? So don't forget, number of pennies, length, width, and depth of the boat. Wait if you can. Keep checking back for more science and engineering activities. If you want to learn more about density and displacement, watch for our next two stories, Captain Kid's crew experiments with floating and sinking and things that float and things that don't. Those should be posted later this week or early next week. Stay curious.